All right, today our viewer question is, how long should food take to transit through your body? Oh my. Uh, well, this gets us down to the function of our amazing digestive system, which is a long tubular organ. How long is it? Well, from the mouth to the, throughout the, the end of the small intestine, and the small intestine that absorbs our nutrients into our bloodstream, uh, that is approximately 22 feet long, uh, if the uh, mouth to the small intestine. And then the small intestine down on the right lower side of the abdomen plugs into our colon. Uh, and those are, that's the last six feet of our intestine. And that reabsorbs water back from the food into our bloodstream, as well as houses our microbiome. So we've got 22 feet of tubing that absorbs nutrients and the last six feet absorbs water. Now, how long does it take food to make that entire 28 foot journey? Well, assuming uh, it's a high fiber diet, so the uh, intestine has enough mechanical mass there to get uh, a purchase on the, on the food mass to push it on through, uh, that person isn't eating all, just a bunch of uh, cola drinks and, and hot dogs and, and ice cream that has no fiber in it. That's going to change the, the numbers that I've got to give you. But assuming it's a whole food plant-based diet like nature designed us to consume, uh, that first journey, the first part of the journey from chewing up the food, swallowing it down, about 45 minutes in the stomach, uh, and then out down that 22 feet of small intestine, it arrives uh, fairly quickly down at the colon there. That entire 22 feet takes an average, an average of six hours, not that long to make that 22 foot uh, uh, journey. And by the way, I've outlined this. If you go to my website, drclapper.com, D-O-C-T-O-R-K-L-A-P-E-R, it's all spelled out, .com, uh, click on the video section, and I've got a video called Digestion Made Easy, where I go through all of, uh, all of this in detail, uh, if you'd like to see it uh, illustrated with lots of pictures. That said, uh, here we are back in the gut, 22 feet uh, in six hours from the mouth down to the colon. And then because the colon needs time to reabsorb six quarts of water from the food back into our bloodstream uh, every day, uh, the colon is larger and it's got little outpouchings of these baffles called house strata that slows down the food stream to give the colon enough time to extract the water out of this liquidy food mass and turn it into a solid stool. And for that reason, the colon tells the food mass, whoa, Nelly, uh, slow down here. And by the time the food mass uh, enters the colon, goes up the ascending colon, across uh, the transverse colon, down the descending colon, uh, through the sigmoid and the rectum, that's about 18 hours. And uh, so the, the six hours from the mouth to the end of the small intestine, plus the 18 hours in the large intestine, the colon, I put it together and it's about 24 hours, give or take. Uh, and, uh, and so the, the food that people consume that sometimes shows up in the toilet, you uh, you eat an ear of, of corn on the cob. Now we don't have the, the enzymes to break down cellulose. So the, the, the corn holes there uh, will make it all the way through. And they're kind of a natural marker for the transit time. Uh, and uh, you have that, uh, let's say six in the evening uh, for dinner, uh, then first morning stool, the next morning, six in the morning, seven or eight in the morning, you'll, you'll probably see the, the corn kernels in, in, the, in, the, uh, in the stool at that time. So roughly 24 hours, long answer for a, for a short, uh, for, a, for a, <laughs> that longer transit time. That said, if you're eating a standard Western diet and it is devoid of fiber, it's all meat and cheese and white bread uh, and, and cola drinks, um, there's so little fiber that the intestine can't get a purchase on the, on the food mass. And so it moves through very slowly. Uh, and it may take uh, oh, 18 hours or so just to get through the small intestine 
and it may take a day or two or longer to make its way through the large intestine. And, and the slower it goes through the colon, the more water gets extracted, the drier it, the stool mass gets, and the drier it gets, the slower it moves. And, and so the wind up with these hard little balls of stool that you gotta push out. Uh, that's called constipation, not a good sign. That leads to all sorts of things from hemorrhoids to diverticuli. That's the problem with an abnormal and uh, uh, unnatural food stream. And so that starts making that number, not 24 hours, but 48, 72, you know, longer. But that's already pathophysiology. That, that's disease function. Uh, uh, it shouldn't take that long. Uh, eat lots of fiber, drink enough water, take a walk every day so you jiggle that colon up and down. And uh, 24 hours should be the transit time from, from mouth to, uh, uh, to the end of the colon. And uh, most importantly, you'll absorb uh, those nutrients and, and have, uh, have very satisfying evacuations uh, as your colon works uh, in the way it was designed to work. So eat those whole foods and your colon will know just what to do with them. Hi everyone, Dr. Michael Clapper here announcing our new format for our Q&A with Dr. K. Annie Hagen will be asking me one question that's been sent in by our viewers. So if you want to see if your question is getting answered, do join us for our Q&A with Dr. K right here. Hope to see you then.